Welcome to another intriguing episode of All Things Mysterious, the podcast where all the realms of true crime, supernatural, and the unexplained converge. I'm your host, Jordan. I'm Matt. We're ready to plunge into today's fascinating mysteries. Let's dive right in. Today, we are stepping back in time, way back, to a time when the church was the ruler and plagues ran rampant through civilization. It started with a few bad years in a town called Strasbourg in the early 1500s. It was a poor area, and the church had control over the citizens, overtaxing them, keeping them poor, keeping them underfed, weak, sick, you know the drill, kind of how everything was back then, pretty much how everything was when the church was over everything, to be honest. At least how it seemed every time that we go over anything when the church is in control. I'm not going to say anything because I'm not going to have people mad at me. That's just how it seems. Every time that we go over something when the church is in control, it just never seems to be a good story. It never starts with, oh, everything's going really well. Maybe we should learn from the past. Maybe. Maybe. Plague was taking over, and everyone was sick, and everyone was panicking, and no one could even afford to eat. I know that feeling. The only thing that they could do, and that they felt they could really have control of, was go to church. And of course, everything that they said back then was, you are sinning. Everything that is going wrong is because you are sinning. And it's a test from God. Because famine, death, plagues, it's all because it's a test from God, obviously. Isn't those pretty much the same message today? Isn't it, though? Isn't it? We're not going to make a lot of people mad on this episode. I don't care. It's what we do. (laughs) It's what we do best. We'll add them to the list of people that don't like us. It's fine. It's fine. In 1517 is when it all seemed to just get really bad. All sorts of plague were hitting Strasbourg, which, by the way, is like modern-day France. Bubonic plague was all over, syphilis, which, of course, they didn't have any way of treating back then and was literally deadly. Something called sweat fever, which I couldn't really figure out what that was, but sweat fever. I don't know if you just sweat till you died or what. Sounds like something you get when you get the syphilis. Maybe it is. I don't know and smallpox. On top of that, starvation, because churches and government were overtaxing everybody. It was a really good time. So 1517 was like the worst year, basically. It was so bad that people who had children were literally just giving their children to orphanages because they were like, no, we can't even feed you. We don't even how we're, we don't know how we're keeping ourselves alive. Here, here are our children. Because everybody is dying. You can do that? Back then you sure can. I don't know about now, Matthew. It might be a little late for yours. Sorry. (laughs) For anyone listening, I'm joking. (laughs) I know you love your kids. But man, there's some days that I just want to drop them off at an orphanage. I'm pretty sure every parent can relate to that at this point. (laughs) On an unrelated note, where's the nearest orphanage to us? I'm pretty sure fire stations still have that baby thing. I think my girl would fit in the box, though. I don't think that they would, but I'm pretty sure they still do that. In fact, I read something in the paper a while back. Yeah, that's a relatively... But it's a that's a baby thing, like... Yeah. Baby drop box. Yeah, that. Which reminds me of the blockbuster drop box. Just drop them off. There you go. On to the next for you. Be kind, re- rewind. <laughs> Be kind, rewind. <laughs> Just rewind the infant. Start over. You have a new family now. Jesus. I wonder how many people listen to this aren't going to understand that reference. Thankfully, I think most of our listeners are old enough to understand. There's going to be a good portion that probably aren't. According to our analytics, we got a lot of 18 and 23 year olds. Oh, those poor people. They don't have a clue what that even means. I have to rewind DVDs or anything on Netflix or. This is totally off topic, but. I remember having an actual tape record, a rewinder. 
Yeah, and you had to sit there and rewind all of it and make sure it went all Well, yeah, but this was just like a little thing, basically a little bit bigger than the tape itself. And you put it in there and you just hit the rewind button and it like rewind it super fast. See, my my VHR player, yeah. VHS. VHS player. Man, it's been a long time since I've had to think about that. My VHS player just rewound everything. You had to rewind it in there. Yeah, this one was just a stand. It basically was just faster than waiting three minutes for it to re- rewind on the VCR. That was the longest three minutes, though. It's only like, really, like, really only like three minutes. The but. sting of whenever you got a movie at Blockbuster and you got home and you were so excited to watch it, and then it was the very end and you had to sit there and wait. You had to rewind it, and it was like, come on. It was a long time before I realized that if you actually stopped the movie and rewound it, it rewound a lot faster than when you were trying to play <laughs> it and rewound it. Waited. <laughs> yes. All right. Anyway, back to the story. As you can imagine, that year stressed a lot of people out real bad. And the next year, on July 15th of 1518, the strangest thing happened. A woman named Frau Trophy began to dance. And she just didn't stop. Literally just didn't stop. And sometimes she would fall into exhaustion and sleep. But the second that she was awake, she would just keep on dancing. And within a week, more people had joined in. Now, this is like a good-sized town. And because it was a good-sized town, it had a printing press. So this was all actually recorded. A week in, authorities sent Frau to the Shrine of St. Vitus in hopes of curing her, obviously because this is the devil's work. She was dancing, so they were going to cure her of the devil's work. But at that point, at least 30 more people had joined in on the dancing madness. And they were dancing until they literally could not dance anymore. Legitimate question. Yes. Do you think she was twerking? Probably not. The way it was described was like, there wasn't even a lot of a rhythm to it. There was no music playing. So she danced like me. No oh, rhythm? Yes. <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably. I have not seen you dance, but I can just only imagine. Born without rhythm. I believe this. I believe it a lot. But it was mostly just their feet moving more than anything. But Definitely this. <laughs> <laughs> right? In the height of the dancing epidemic... Town officials actually decided to try and tire them out. (laughs) Oh, I can't wait to see what their plan was. I guess they decided instead of fighting it, they were just going to encourage it. So they put up a dance hall and they got them red shoes, like brand new, nice red shoes. And they were like, okay, maybe if we, here, look, dance more. Because at this point, they're dancing. At one point, they were described as dancing with mindless intensity. Which is honestly... It's the only way I dance. (laughs) (laughs) It's baffling to me because maybe it's just because I'm out of shape. But even back when I was younger, I didn't go dancing very often. I really didn't. That wasn't me. I'm not much of a party person. It just, it wasn't me. But I'd go dancing once or twice with my friends. And I'd go dancing for an hour or two. And I was freaking done. Okay, done. I think I just solved it. They were secretly drinking tequila. I, listen, it was for weeks on end, weeks on end, like they would still dance with their feet completely bloodied and barely able to stand up, but they would still be dancing. That's what happened when girls dance with me. I figured they'd just run away. That too. (laughs) People dance with you, Matt? No. (laughs) Thanks for calling me out. You're welcome. Anytime. Anytime. But even after they collapsed, their feet would still be moving. They would be collapsed from exhaustion and they would still be like trying to dance in their collapsed state. I don't even like, I'm just trying to picture that in my head. And all I can see is them on their backs with their legs kicking and moving. I know. I it In my head, I picture it almost like a seizure, but legs only. I don't know. That's all I can picture, though, because it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Have you ever seen a dog when they're sleeping and they're like laid on their back? And their legs are just twitching? Yeah, they're having yeah. a dream roller, they're running. I guess that's about right. That's all I can picture in my head. Just them laying on their back with their hands like paws and then their legs just kicking. Yeah, that sounds about right though. It really does because they would dance literally until they could not anymore. 
And it didn't matter if people intervened. It didn't matter if people physically stopped them. They continued. I'm all for it. They just kept going. And this went on. They had a feeling. It went on for two months. They didn't stop to eat. They didn't stop to drink. It literally just went on until most of them literally either collapsed or died. To be fair, this is a, in a time where their form of entertainment was watching executions. Yeah, no, it was a completely different time. A wholly one million percent different kind of time. And you got a feeling you got to start dancing and grooving. Yeah. I'm just like, I'm trying to, so I was looking it up. And apparently there was no music to begin with. She just started dancing. I guess she left the house and just started dancing and slowly made her way to the town square or something. And slowly a bunch of people just started to join her. And after a while, people just were like, you know what? I'm going to play some music. And I'm pretty sure after a while they were like, you guys look ridiculous. So I'm going to give you some rhythm because there's nothing. Because if you think about it, everyone's dancing to their own rhythm. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and I, I guarantee you, since it was this time and it was a female, not one male there decided to ask her why she was dancing. Oh, I guarantee it. <laughs> She's a witch. She's dancing. Exactly. It was just the work of the devil at that point. She's a witch or it's the work of the devil. There was no other questioning about it. I'd be like, ma'am, why are you dancing? Nope. There was just mindless intensity dancing. Okay. Just we're just going to dance for forever until they die. And I tried to look up an actual written number, but there's not a for sure written death toll. I found anywhere from 50 to 400 people died in the dancing plague. And it's just so weird because as soon as it started with that one person, Frau, two months in, just stopped. It just stopped as soon as it started. And then it was just over. I'm bored. It's just, it's the weirdest thing. See, and that, that's something I totally would do. I would, if I lived back in that time, I would just do random weird stuff just to make people, freak people out. It reminds me of back when people used to do flash mobs. Oh, God. <laughs> I totally forgot about that trend, and I now I wish I could forget it again. Flash mobs were great. They were so... Cringy and amazing. Yeah, cring- no, definitely amazing. cringy, not amazing. They were amazing. I remember, what was it, about 10 years ago? Maybe further than that, actually, because I feel like it was in high school era. Or just after high school. Yeah, I think it was right just after high school. But I just remember every freaking YouTube video that ever got uploaded that whole year was a stupid flash mob thing. It was awesome. Please don't bring that trend back ever again. Flash mobs were awesome. I think they were awesome. If you could pull it off right. Some of them were really bad. Oh, and then those flash mobs of kids asking girls to prom and stuff. Okay, those were really bad. Yeah. Those were legitimately really bad. But some of them were like professional level. Those were really cool. But they're just still so cringe. I'm 100% convinced that a Chester had to create those. I happened to think they were so cool. Maybe that's just because I thought they were, I don't know. I thought they were awesome. You heard it here first. Jordan's a Chester. I'm not a Chester. I thought flash mobs were awesome. We're going to have a poll. That's fine. Who here thinks that flash mobs were cool? I think they were awesome. One vote. You're so weird. All right. 9,000 votes say no. We haven't even had the poll yet, you weirdo. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vote 9,000 times. You cannot vote 9,000 times. I'll create 9,000 fake Facebook accounts just to vote. I'm going to be really impressed if you can do that. It's a challenge. Challenge accepted. Oh, my God. On to our super fun theories. So our first theory is really stupid. Self-analysis is very important. It is, but it was stupid enough, and I was just like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to put it in there. People thought that Frau started dancing to embarrass her husband and that enough people were like, you know what? I'm also going to embarrass my husband, so I'm going to I'm gonna start dancing too. And again, I'm going to go back to the thing. They could have just asked her. They, I guess they could have, but the thing on that is like, okay, you were like basically dead or actually dead. 
Yeah, you got to understand the, the time that they're in. If they would have done that, good chance their husband would have killed him. Yeah, from what I understand, he was actually a really abusive human. <laughs> he very well could have. But at the same time, it just doesn't have a lot of merit to me. Because it's dedication. It's exactly. That's just a lot of dedication. And I feel like there's other things you probably could have done that probably would have had a lot more power to it than just randomly dancing. I could think of a lot of stuff that I'd rather do for two months straight. Exactly. Dancing does not fall on that list. That's my thought. Obviously, the next one also has a decent amount of merit to it, and that would be... Drugs? Alcohol? Actually, no. That's my theory. Mass hysteria. Because of the horrible years that they had, everybody just broke the fuck down. Everybody just lost their mind. They just lost it. The church had all the power. They had no food. They were starving. And everybody was literally dying. And one person started to dance. She just lost her mind. And everyone was like, all right. See, I, I think we've talked about this before, how the whole mass hysteria thing, to me, that's lazy. It's that's why it's not my number one theory. It, a lot like when skeptics are trying to disprove like something supernatural. It's the easy answer for me. That's why I don't like hysteria at all. I every time mass hysteria is involved, and there's a story that I'm gonna do here soon that has it too. And I just, it's too easy. I get the kind of per, the simplest answer is usually the correct one. That's just too simple. If I agree with you, but I will say, out of all the stories that we've covered. If any of them made sense for mass hysteria, this one, any of them did, this one does actually make a little tiny bit of sense for it, just because of the horrible years that they'd had. All the drought, all the suffering, it seems like everybody literally was about to break down. And so I can understand it to an extent. Now, I'm not saying that it does make sense, because it really doesn't, and I don't particularly like mass hysteria. I don't think it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because the mass hysteria is basically just saying, we don't know. And I really don't think that it does make sense. I really don't. But if I was to pick one specific time that I could find in history, at this point, this is probably the only point that I would be like, maybe, maybe. But there is one more theory that I have that actually makes the slightest little bitty tiny bit of sense. Just for that theory, we're going to bring back the grading scale. Okay, fine. F minus. You know what? That's not the worst you've given me, so I'll take it. You've gone far worse than that for me. The first one was like this double Z minus. Yeah, no, I knew. I, I was far, far aware of that, but I had enough people mention it that I was like, that's pretty far of a reach, but you know what? Screw it. I'll mention it. Why not? See me some of the other merch that I'm going to make is make like a report card. Of course you are. <laughs> have your name on it. Just for you, I'm going to make merch that just says Matthew. We got to do that. We got to do Fuck Chester. Oh, I've got some great ideas. We're definitely going to have merch eventually that says... Very soon. Watch the Facebook page. You'll get notifications. Yes. Eventually, we're going to have stuff that says if tech is Jordan approved. Because eventually we will find tech that's Jordan approved. <laughs> or if you get little stickers... <laughs> Says Jordan approved tech. <laughs> hey, look, this hasn't broken yet, and I've touched it. <laughs> I'm still trying to find a company to make them, but once I do, I'm ordering like 10 million of them. No, it's fine. My best friend makes stickers. I'm going to see if she can do it. It's going to be fine. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I'm sure she can, but regardless, anyway. And eventually, we might actually find some tech that's Jordan approved. <laughs> it's going to be a difficult far reach, you guys, but I think we can do it. <laughs> I think the only thing so far would probably be the rock USB. Microphones are all right. Or the pet rock. What is that thing? I don't know. What is it? There's a rock with a USB port in it or something. It's like a gag gift of the pet rock. I don't know, but I'd find a way to break it. Probably. <laughs> anyway, watch the Facebook page. All right. My final theory that actually has a little tiny bit of merit to it. A little tiny bit, even though, to be honest, with their, with this story, there's 
there's not a lot of merit to anything because it's frankly just completely crazy. Researchers. Wow, I can't speak. <laughs> researchers. <laughs> okay, Matt. Let me try that one more time. Scientists. <laughs> We're going to try that word this time. I've discovered that there is a specific kind of fungus or mold that grows often on bread. And because back then they were often eating moldy bread and moldy food called ergot. And I'm probably not saying that, but it's the truth. And apparently if you eat it, it's said to cause the same symptoms of taking LSD. Where did I get some of that stuff? Eating moldy That's bread. Asking for a friend. Eating moldy bread, but you have to find the exact same fungus. Have fun. But if you think about it back then, that's pretty much all that they were eating because if they could get food, it was probably moldy and disgusting. A lot of people were probably completely losing their minds and hallucinating. And considering that everybody was eating food that was disgusting and moldy and awful if they were eating at all. Hold on. I didn't know that you went back in time and cooked for them. Listen, if I was cooking for them, it wouldn't be moldy. It would just be burned <laughs> or undercooked or somehow both. I don't know how that works, but somehow I've done both. I, I honestly don't doubt it. Probably make it burn. Un There's a uh, reason that I don't really cook. <laughs> okay. If I do, it's in an air fryer, which tells me if it's done. It tells me. It, yes, this is done. Probably the kind of person who burns popcorn. No, there's a popcorn button on the microwave. It's a popcorn button that you're not supposed to use. That I use all the time anyway because it works. Have you ever seen on the microwave popcorn? It yes, it always says. says don't use the popcorn button. You know what? I use it anyway. And you know what? It has not failed me. Yet. It has not failed me. But anyway, supposedly it causes the same hallucinations as LSD. So if you think about it, if the whole town had accidentally been eating that same food, they'd all be hallucinating and they might all be like dancing like crazy and just losing their mind. Dancing past injury to the point of death. They were dancing to the point where they literally had heart attacks or strokes or just died. I can't think of something else that might make sense more than this. I both like and hate this theory. I like it because it actually uses scientific principles, but it also uses a lot of, uh, or I'm trying to say, a lot of uh, assumptions. It does, I agree, because every single person who was dancing would also have had to have eaten this specific fungus. And that's 400 people eating the same exact thing. And it's not like it's the whole town either. Exactly. It relies on... A lot of very specific circumstances that I'm just not sure about. And not saying I know from experience, but what trip would you be going on that you would be dancing? I don't know. I've never taken LSD. Neither. I really don't. So I, yeah. I don't know. I, I have no freaking clue. Then, though, maybe things were completely different. This theory is a lot better than mass hysteria. I agree with you. Like I said, this one has some merit. I didn't think that it was like, wow, look, it's solved. I think that a few of them make sense for this. I'll give you an F plus. From you, that's wow. It's, that's wow. Look at me go. <laughs> One of these days you might actually get a D. If you gave me a grade higher than an F something, I don't know what I would do with my life. I don't know. We'll probably never figure it out. But it does, in a way, it makes sense. because. But at the same time, it doesn't. Because how long do the symptoms of this last for? I couldn't really figure that out because these people continued for weeks on end until they literally just died. You would think the symptoms of this wouldn't last for that long. Like, how long does that stay in your system? Obviously, they would have to eat at some point during this. Otherwise, they won't last for months. The dancing plague itself lasted that long. The individual people didn't. They either died or collapsed, and then other people ended up coming in and taking their place. But you would think that they would still have to eat and drink at some point. Okay. Maybe they just collapsed. I know, but if it's... But yeah, and then... If it's, something. yeah. If they were just not eating and drinking, they would probably be dead within a day, most. Not a day, about three or four. Yeah, but at normal it's... circumstances. But you're dancing where you're burning a lot of calories and yeah. you're dehydrating yourself. I don't think they last more than a day dancing yeah especially back then when everybody was 
already starved. Yeah, and it's not like they have air conditioning. I don't necessarily know what the climate is, but heck, you go dancing in a Alaska and you're still going to be burning up within 10 minutes. Yeah, and it was summer. So yeah, they had to at least eat and drink at some point. You would think at least. But if they did, that would make sense of how they kept eating the same food. It's true. But I don't know. Definitely better than the other two theories, but still don't think it's a definitive answer. No, to this day, that's the best answer that they've really got for it. And that's about the best that I can figure out, too. There's not really any other answer aside from people just be crazy. This is totally a man from that time frame where they'd rather have it be a mystery for all time. Than to just ask. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) exactly. You know that they did not ask at all. Oh, no, no. It was the devil. It was just the devil. We could go over there and ask her, but no, we'll just let this be a mystery. It was just the devil. The devil was inside all of them for obvious reasons. It couldn't just be anything else. No. Sad part is there's still people who would believe that. Oh, 100%. 100%. They were possessed. It was the devil. It was the devil's work. God was, I don't know, cleansing the town. I don't know. I'm making that part up. I didn't actually hear that. But that's probably what they thought. I don't know. That's what makes sense, though. That's what they thought back then. Not really trying to piss people off, but it's going to piss people off. But why does it always seem like the devil does the fun stuff? Because the devil does do all the fun stuff. Honestly, that side sounds a lot more fun than the other side. He does, but that's why the devil's always the temptation. Yeah, but it's always the fun stuff. Exactly. Because, I don't know, sinning is lead you not into temptation. And that temptation is all the things that you shouldn't do, which is all the fun stuff. Yeah, ignore the biggest part of human nature. Correct. And they cut down just about everything in that town. They were like, nope, you're not going to do anything. God would get a bounce house and make it a little bit more fun. Yeah. Yeah. How many times have you... Which obviously, what makes me frustrated is obviously the town had enough power to do something about starvation. Because they were like, all these people, something's happening. So let's just put them on the dance hall and get them some new shoes. Instead of, I don't know, feeding them. But I bet you the priest and all the church members were... Oh, they were fat and happy. Oh, absolutely. They didn't suffer. Mm Mm-mm. I don't don't even know. Was it like a board or government? I don't know. I couldn't figure out the actual hierarchy, to be honest with you. That confuses the crap out of me. Because there's the government and then there's the church. And And while they are technically separate things, they... The church still ruled and it was... Like, not, I don't, it was confusing, and church I was had, trying to figure yeah. it out, and I was having a heck of a time. Church had more power than the government. Oh, they did. They did, because if you wanted to do anything, you had to go to church. And there were people who just starved and starved, and they'd go to church, and they'd be like, why is my family starving? They'd be like, you're just not praying hard enough. And back then, unfortunately, people were just like, okay, I'll pray some more, which really sucks, because back then, they didn't know what else to do. To be fair, back then, that was pretty much all they could do. That really was all they really could do. They didn't have technology. They couldn't figure out why their crops were dying or anything else. So they were just like, okay. And they'd pray for hours and hours on end and then just die. What else were they supposed to do? That was all they had was their their religion. And then the church was just like, yes, we will take all of your money, please and thank you, to tell you that you are not enough. And for the record, I don't necessarily have a problem with church or religions these days. I do at some points in some churches. but No, it was just mostly uh, how it was back then. Yeah, back then was, it was a lot different than it is today. A lot worse. Obviously, there's still some religions that are probably worse than it was back then. But it's, yeah, it's, I you know, I'm all like George on this one. The churches back then were disgusting pieces of crap. They were basically used to enslave people. That was pretty much how it worked back then. You had the church and you lived by the church and that was it. That was your life. That was your governing power, regardless of whether the governing power was the church or not. It was. If you weren't a part of the church, you weren't going to be alive anymore. Nope. You were shunned and you were a witch. Or worse, there was the crusades. That's true. That is 100% true. But... No, the dancing plague was the 
such a strange little mysterious thing that just happened for a couple months. It just popped up and people literally died because they danced so hard, which mind boggles me. Mind boggles you? Yes. It's a term I decided it right now. It's going to be on the next shirt. Excellent. I love that. We're going to use it. It mind boggles me. You are welcome. I'm stealing it. You can't steal when you made it. Correct. I made it and I'm using it and it's mine. I'm claiming it, not stealing. I'm claiming it. We're going to have so many different shirt designs. Great. We're going to have a whole bunch. Y'all can pick. I know which one I'm going to take. Excellent. I'm glad. See how long before I get in trouble at work. Instantly. <laughs> Instantly. All right. I guess that's it. Yeah, that's about it. Okay. Two theories sucked. One, not bad. She's speechless, guys. She's a compliment to her. It is what it is. Thank you for joining us on this journey through all things mysterious. Your engagement is what makes this so rewarding. If you've enjoyed uncovering these mysteries with us, please show your support by liking, subscribing, and following us on your favorite listening platform. For more intriguing content and ways to stay connected, don't forget to check our check us out on our links in the description below. Your involvement is the key to unlocking more thrilling mysteries. As always, we keep you guessing. <laughs>